just one minute sir we, uh-huh. we will we will introduce you then we will honor you and then uh, you can uh, give your talk sir after your presentation got it okay. is that all right sir we can start avaru avaru aarambikkira ha you start eh sir can you start no no first we will introduce sir and yeah. then uh, professor uh, uh, shankar kutti nayar will felicitate you and then yes sir and he is he is all here yes sir first uh, i will just few words i will just say felicitation first or that that is after yes sir yes after the speech speech eh? felicitation first uh, and yes. then honoring and yes. then your speech all right <clears throat> so good evening to all of you on behalf of the kuppu swami shastri research institute mailapur chennai i have great privilege in welcoming all of you for this function which we are conducting through online for the past two years this is held under the pombur ramabhadran endowment it was instituted by one of the well known industrialists as well as philanthropist the artichari well known here for his unification donations to many educational and cultural organizations and more than 25 years ago he instituted this endowment to honor senior sanskrit professors every year with a purse of rupees 10000 at that time and we felt it was too uh, less so he kindly agreed to enhance the value to 20000 and the first recipient of this kombur ramabhadran cash award was the great agnihotram ramanuja tatacharya swami followed by another stalwart very great scholar in mimamsa and vyakarana and other subjects mimamsa kesari k balasubramanya shastrigal former principal of madras sanskrit college and then subsequently there were so many traditional scholars and some modern scholars and every year we have been honoring the great scholars who have done yeoman service to sanskrit with cash award and this year we felt that it would be apt to honor one of the greatest sanskrit scholars in india now and senior most sanskrit scholar professor n p uni former vice chancellor of the shankaracharya university kalani of course there are so many credentials which we cannot uh, describe in fact we can have a separate seminar on the contribution of professor n p uni so he has himself done so much of service in many fields of sanskrit literature he has published so many books which, which we cannot count 50 60 70 it goes on increasing in fact in one of the meetings dr tk raja said every 3 months professor uni is releasing one book which i am not able to do and that's what dr raja said so oh, such a great compliment from another great international scholar dr k k raja himself and what more we can say and dr uni had been honored by the president of india with the certificate of merit he was also the president of madras sanskrit college and where he took keen interest in the development of the college as well as the student activities and we are very happy that he has consented to be present with us though it is through online mode and receive this award for this year for the year 2022 and we are especially thankful to professor shankaran kutti nayar who had accepted to honor dr 
एन पी उन्नी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ अवर रिसर्च इंस्टीट्यूट एंड डॉक्टर शंकर गुप्ती नायर इज अ वेरी वेल नोन एंड हाईली रिस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर ऑफ हिस्ट्री इन केरला फॉर्मर प्रोफेसर ऑफ हिस्ट्री इन दी यूनिवर्सिटी एट कालडी एंड वी आर इंडीड थैंकफुल टू यू सर फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग our request to honor professor uni on our behalf and i welcome all the participants and collectively we all pray for the long life and good health of dr np uni so that he will serve for more number of years to come and many more students would be inspired by dr np uni and now i request professor shankaran gupti nayar to honor Professor N. P. Vuni, on behalf of our institute, and offer his felicitation. Thank you. Professor. Professor yes. Sankaran Kodi Nayar, please honor him with the shawl. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. The same Professor N. B. Unni, scholars of the Kupi Swami Research Institute, Chennai, Director, President, and Secretary of the Institute. Fellow scholars, academics, researchers, indeed, it's a pleasure to honor Professor N. B. Unni, who has rendered yeoman service to the study of Sanskrit in India. When I stand before you, I remember the 1949 Oriental Conference, wherein R. C. Majumdar said that Sanskrit be made the national language of India. of course hindi can be given top priority but sanskrit is the most acceptable and the least objectionable language to be made popular in india that was a sense of the oriental conference held in uh, mithila in 1949 so sanskrit remains to be studied at length and in depth in spite of 75 years of independence and although there are many universities like uh, sanskrit university of kerala in kaladi or the university in haridwar or in other parts of india sanskrit remains to be studied in a secondary way that's the pity of all the sanskrit studies in india i don't want to prolong my felicitation nb unni popularly known as nbu among scholars had his early career in central travancore a princely state of south in south kerala later after his school education he came to trivandrum where from he studied and lived for the last uh, 60 years and more he was a student of the government sanskrit college trivandrum and later he worked there for about 10 years Thereafter, he joined the University of Kerala as curator, where he worked as curator for another six years. In between, he became a researcher for PhD under Dr. P. K. Narayanan and took his doctorate on Kalashegras of uh, the dramas of Kalashegra. Subsequently, he became reader and professor and emeritus professor, and finally became the vice chancellor of the newly started. Sri Shankaracharya University of Sanskrit at Kaladi. Professor N. B. Unni, as the president has said, secured the Rashtrapati's award in 2001. Not only that, N. B. Unni's articles of about 200 had been published all over the globe on different aspects of Sanskrit studies, whether it be Mushiki Vamsha or Kogel Samnesha or Kalidasa. or about uh, shankara or about any aspect of sanskrit studies including studies on max muller and others in fact 
most of these papers had been <clears throat> ignored in many of the journals, but later in uh, almost uh, 10 years back, Professor N.B. Unni himself brought out a, an omnibus of his papers in the form of highways and byways and highways of Sanskrit church. And we only secured the Bharata Sri Award from the Indian Institute of Historical Studies, Kolkata, besides well-known Kepi Panikar Prize for original research in Kerala. Kepi Panikar, perhaps you might be knowing, happened to be the elder brother of historian K.M. Panikar. And Envioni is also familiar with the many awards of the university, including Rajan Sedu, Sedurani Bharati Bhai's award. Not only that, he was conferred Professor Sri Ramanan Memorial Kerala Sri Award last year. No wonder he was selected for the Maho Mahovakai Award by the Kalidas University. So all these testify to what Dr. N. B. Unik has done to the promotion of Sanskrit. Uh, as a young scholar and as a senior scholar later, he was able to attract hundreds of Sanskrit students. It was he who initiated a special efforts to popularize Sanskrit learning in schools, colleges, and universities. And, and most of his books, which he provided to students freely, 100% freely, provided them with an opportunity to study Sanskrit at length. And most of the teachers and uh, professors of various universities and colleges in Kerala uh, are his students. We have three Sanskrit government colleges in Patambi, in Trivandrum, and Tripontara, besides the Sanskrit University. Even if we go to any government college out of the 41 government colleges, we can see one student or other of Dr. N. B. Unni. Unni was very active in San Sanskrit seminars, lectures, workshops, webinars, etc. He studies on Shankara, Kalidasa, Tabadi Samarana, um, even books like uh, those on Tandra um, Samucheya in three volumes. It's a classic because Tandra Samucheya itself is the backbone of Kerala's religious history. So the way in which he was able to provide interest to the Sanskrit scholars in Tantra Samachaya, uh, Tabadi Samarana, et cetera, added luster to his greatness as a scholar in uh, Sanskrit, as well as in Indology. Perhaps not only Indology, Dr. N. N. B. Unni specialized himself in Kerology, as testified to by his studies on uh, Mushigavamsha, Kogila Sandesha, Megha Sandesha, such studies had been brought out with a long introduction by Professor N. B. Unni during the last uh, half a century. Those uh, interpretations, uh, Sanskrit, Sanskrit interpretations are of great value to non-Sanskrit scholars as well. Altogether, there are more than 40 important books which merit our special attention. Tabati Samarana, uh, Nagananda, uh, etc., etc., are very important studies besides these books in Malayalam on Max Muller, or about 108 uh, Pagodi temples, or about Upanishads, or about Smriti literature published by the Dravidian Linguistics Association. And Shankara Smriti, as a separate book, has added Lester to Professor N. B. Unni as an author and scholar. So, only Sanskrit contributions are immense. He was also uh, was able to attend many Sanskrit world conferences as in the case of the conference in Italy. And he was invited by the um, local secretary of Turin for lectures and uh, uh, seminars. So World Sanskrit Conference also owe a lot to Professor N. B. Unni as a scholar of South India. And most of his contemporaries uh, all over India, including Satyavidra Shastri had given, had provided uh, encomiums of, on N. B. Unni's contributions to the language. This uh, uh, 
so called uh, suppressed language i must say because sanskrit yet remains to revive its importance in india because we have nothing but sanskrit for anything and everything whether we speak about aryan problem or about kalabra interregnum or about south indian history we have to depend on sanskrit sources the very existence of our religious history is in the vedas rig sama yajur athra vedas all in sanskrit so therefore what i wanted to emphasize here is that only deserve greater recognition greater awards and he is yet to receive a national award like the padma awards although he received uh, the award from rashtrapati so maho maho bhatiya kharda shri kerala shri dr n b unni uh, deserve greater things and i wish him very long life very healthy life very wealthy life he was conferred Amrita Girti Puraskar by Amrita Anandamai Amma is no small recognition because it was an award given to Malayalam and N.B. Unni happened to be a Malayalam scholar as well because he, in, he took uh, M.A. in Malayalam as well apart from Sanskrit in 1968 and for both M.A. Sanskrit and Malayalam he secured first class, first rank is uh, uh, without parallel most of his contemporaries and teachers including kera kanbula vikan arnabula and many others like kunjuni raja helped him a lot in uh, opening a new track and now he is the torch bearer of sanskrit studies i wish and pray for his health and uh, wealth and academic activity with greater vigor with this award of award instituted by the Kubaswami Research Institute of Chennai in honor of K. Ramabhadran, a great Sanskritist. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you, sir. Oh. You wish to have a long life along with you. Uh -huh. so, Balu? Thank uh, you, uh, Professor Sankaranjati uh, Nair, for your excellent encomiums and uh, wonderful uh, delivery of uh, a brief history of uh, Sanskrit, Malayalam, and also Professor uh, N.P. Unni's uh, contribution, and it was so nice uh, listening to you. Maybe we will invite you for a special lecture in future. Uh, we are really honored, sir, by your presence and for offering felicitations to Professor N.P. Unni on behalf of our research institute. Now it is our um, uh, duty, our uh, request to Professor N.P. Unni to deliver his lecture and enlighten us on the Tantra literature of Kerala. Uh, thank you, Professor Mr. for introducing me. And uh, he is not only a friend and a neighbor, we have been together in our academic activities in, 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 our, in our academic activities. So it is a pleasure to be with him. Uh, this evening. Now I may just, uh, say something about the Tantra literature of Kerala, which is a literature of the Kerala Kerala has contributed to all the history to all states of Kerala, but it is a speciality for Kerala and Kerala Tantra, Kerala Astronomy, Kerala. Uh, and uh, so there are architecture and there are several fields in which Kerala has contributed significantly. Uh, so I, I, have, I have contributed some books on several, several of these topics and uh, my effort on Tantra literature of Kerala has also uh, be, has become a company in three volumes. So let me say something about it. <laughs> The term Tantra is generally applied to a class of religious literature. To be specific, the term Tantra stands for a system of doctrines or a book. Agama means tradition, and Samhita signifies a collection of sacred texts. The distinction consists only in minor ages. Accordingly, Agamas may be uh, considered as a special class of works which propagate 
the worship of Shiva and Shakti, works of a similar kind, especially devoted to the sect of Vishnu, are termed Samhidas. Tantras derive materials from both these classes of literature. The Vaishnavas consider Tantra Samhidas as their sacred text. It is the Shaivas who propagate the Agamas, and hence they are often popularly class, uh, 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 called Shaiva Agama. In, in, in the sixth sense, only Shaktas practice the Tantras, which is more ritualistic in nature. The word Tatra is derived from the root Tanu, meaning to expand. Same, some hold that the view, the world, the world has come connotation for the physical aspects of human being. Others relate the word Tantra to a string of root because of the musical qualities of the principles. Vishnu Sabhida has given an etymology for the term as follows. Sarve artha yena tanyande trayan deja faya jaya iti tantra se tantra tum tantra jaya parijakshade among the religious Text the Tantra occupy only a fourth position after Sudhi, Sudhi, and Purana. Though the presentation of Tantra give them a specific place, second only to Vedas. Monday Williams considers Tantra as a class of works teaching magical and mystical formula, mostly in the form of dialogues between Shiva and Durga, and set to treat of five subjects. The the creation, the destruction of the world, the worship of the gods, the attainment of uh, all objects, especially the six superhuman faculties, and the four modes of union to the supreme spirit of, of by meditation. The author of Sanskrit text, uh, textual uh, lexical work, Shaddhartha Jindavani has quoted a definition of Tandra, which gives a better idea of the class of literature as follows. Sargasya, Prisargasya, Mandra Lakshana Mevaja, Devadanam Chasamstanam, Tirthanam Chaiva Varnanam, Athei Vasama Sarmascha, Mandra Samstanam Mevaja, Samstanam Chaiva Bhuranam, Yendranam Chaiva Tarnaya, Utpatu Vibhutanam Cha, Tarunam Kalpasam Chidam, Samstanam Jodisham Chaiva, Puran Akhyana Mevaja, Koshasya Katanam Chaiva, Pradhanam Padifashanam, Shauja Javuja Sejakyanam, Naraganam Javanam, Harajakra Sejakyanam, Sri Gumso Seva Lakshanam, Raja Tharmo, Dana Tharmo, Yuvatar Masta Hegaja, Kavahara Kathedeja, Tada, Shahadiatma Varnanam, Vitya Dilkana Yutam, Andra Vitya Vidi. The definition gives an encyclopedic soul to the class of works. Many of the characteristics of Dharma Shastra are seen in this type of works. There is a threefold division of Tantra like Vishnu Kranda, Jatha Kranda, and Ashwa Kranda. Each of these divisions have 64 works respectively, making a total of 192 works. Some treatises provide a list of these works. There are other classifications as Samhida, Agama, and Rahasya. Also, Tatuga, Satuga, uh, Satyaga, Rajasa, and Tamasa, Vaidhiga, and Avaidhiga. Parts in the field are classified under these heads based on characteristics. There are other branches of Tandra called Yamala and Damara. Yamalas, which are eight in number, contain the features of <coughs> this described in the following definition. Sushisha Yodhisha Kyanam. Nitya Kritya Pradivanam, Krama Sutram Varna Phedu, Yadi Phedu Stathai Vaja, Yuga Dharmasya Samkhyadu, Yamalasya Ashta Lakshanam. Eight Yamalas pertain respectively to Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, Lakshmi, Uma, Skanda, Ganesha, and Griha. The six Dhamaras to say relate to Yoga, Shiva, Saraswati, Brahma, and Gandhara. The Agamas are the religious texts of Shaiva system, and they are spoken of as the utterances of the, from the mouth of Shiva in response to inquiries of his divine concerns of Parvati. 
पंचम पंचम सभी था लेट्स कंटेंस डेफिनेशन इन द क्लास ऑफ लिटरेचर कीपिंग विद व्यू ऑफ ये बहुत शिवा आपने ये कॉन्सेप्ट द फॉलोइंग इस डेफिनेशन आ गया था पंजाब प्रास्तु गया था जब गिदी जाने ने मतलब जब वासुदेव उस या तस्मान आ गया मैं उससे दे प्रस्तुत से प्लेस चाहिवा देवता नाम पर आर्शरम साथे नाम चाहिवा धर्मेशम पुरस्सरणम ये वजा शक्करम साथे नाम चाहिवा ध्यान योग के चतुर विधा सत्तफर लक्षण है रुपम तो आ गया मैं तब विधरुम बुधा ये शक्करमांस शक्करमांस रफ़ेर तू ही रा शांति पशी करना स्तंभना विद्वेषना उच्चारणा and mara these characteristics are commonly applicable to all tantras vajaswadi mishra in his commentary on yoga bhashya has attempted to derive the word agamas as follows agachandi buddhi agachandi buddhi varohandi apyudaya nishraya sarupaya asmat sa agama as already noted those narrated by shiva to parvati are called agamas But these narrated by Parvati to Shiva are called the Vigamas. There are numerous treatises on both these categories, belonging to a subsidiary nature, to decide the names of Upagamas and the Upadigamas. There are thirty-two Shaiva Agamas, which form the basis of the religio-philosophical system of the Shaivas. These are pertaining to Shakta cult, according to. According to me, there are five super agamas, sixty-four kaula agamas, and eighty-four mishra agamas, forming a total of seventy-seven treatises. The samhitas form a distinct class in which they exhibit a wider scope, having twelve thousand stanzas for each text. As already noted, these pertain to the Vaishnava sect. The Pavishkar Samhita has given. The following description of the variety: Dushak Sahasra Vajena Samhita Kiam Sadagama Ye Vajje Cha Andara Alaja Andara Vai Shastar Tena Adiga Shatai Sarvesha Samhita Sabja Bodha Bia Kamalodha. There are numerous sects belonging belonging to this category. Out of which only a few like Ahir Budhina Samhita, Ishara Samhita, Parashara Samhita. And there is another Sir Abhijit Vidyapur, Dr. Shreda, in his introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, has provided a list of 215 works of the kind, and has admitted that the list is incomplete. Many valuable works mentioned in his list remain to be published. In addition to works belonging to Tantra, Agama, and Samhita, there are several compositions which form the Sutras. The Tantrika uh, uh, sutras belong to several texts. Thus, the texts of Vaikhanasa Sutra, Narada Bhakti Sutra, pertaining to Vaishnava, while Pashupata Sutra and Bhuti Sha Shasana belong to Shaiva sects. Treatises like Parashurama Kalpa Sutra and Shakti Sutra are the sutras of the Shakti cult. A survey of these works. In this class, will reveal, reveal the vast scope of the growth of this religio-philosophy literature. Practices of different kind, both practices which are pure and as also abhorrentious, can be found mentioned in them according to magical and mythical formulas. There are temples and tantrika literatures, though it is difficult to ascertain the period of the introduction of tantra in Kerala. It can be definitely stated that tantrika rituals are closely connected with the temples of Kerala. According to tradition, Parashurama regained the land of Kerala from the sea, throwing his battle axe. He is further credited with the establishment of 108 temples in this region. He is supposed to have brought Brahmins from other parts of India and engaged them to perform rituals in these shrines. The Kerala Mahabhya, purported to be a legendary history of Kerala, mentions that God Vishnu instructed Parashurama to establish numerous temples all over the region and to install different deities in them. The temples of Durga are located on seashores, while those of Shastra, 
were established in hilly regions. According to Kerala the sage is credited with the establishment of 4,448 temples, out of which 108 belong to Goddess Durga. Another version of Kerala Bahadya in Sanskrit, containing more than 2,300 stanzas and a hundred chapters, states that Vishnu asked the sage Parasirama to establish 24,000 shrines in which 33 deities are to be installed. The sage did accordingly and made the arrangements for the worship, engaging 12 tandrins of great repute. The following stanzas are interesting in this connection. Ittiktva virade shambhav, Bhagavan Vishnu Dabhidavit, Edad bhubhu tu bhuyatvam, Etavastu mama shasanat, Parthrus chaturumasya sahasrani, Shetrani kuru pargava, Rayastam shadi devaisa, Brahmana shankarayanaja, Sagam sametya pot bhubhu, Pasam yahava nindama, Brahmana irveda vidvisha, Harvesta is tantra varegi, Uttarad and Vijayanatra, Goda Vaj Yuvase Vidan, Kalpaya Masa Devana, Pujartam, Kulgusatama, Tandrudo, Dwadasha Sreta, Pradeshta, Tavagal Payet, Tadur Shasrata, Deva Leyamagal Payet. Thus it may be seen that Sage Parasirama is credited with the establishment of numerous temples throughout the length and breadth of Kerala. In consonance with the number of temples, there are a host of different deities found installed in the shrines of the region. Most popular among the deities are Shiva, Vishnu, Padragali, Durga, Ganapati, Subramanya, Saraswati, Shasta, Shankaradarayana, Sri Rama, Krishna, Narasimha, and Parvati. Other deities include Lakshmana, Deva, Varaha, Hanuman, Hanundari, Surya Narayana, Parashirama, Kubera, Veda, and Veda Vyasa. Some of these deities are conceived as having different aspects. For example, Shiva is conceived as having the aspects of Vishnamurti, Shankar Narayana, Arthadajishtara, Kirada Ridra, Somaskanda, Chandrasekara, Prashadudha, Gangadhara, Dhruvurandaka, Murtinjaya, Kaladavaka, Aghora, numbering over 50. This is the case with the deities selected. Both of whom are conceived in their numerous divergent aspects and aspects. Among these deities, Shasta, also called Harihara Putra, in view of the concepts of the origin of God, this is the result of the union between Hari in the form of Mohini and Hara Shiva. According to tradition, Parashirama built a chain of temples along the gods dedicated to Shasta to stand guard and protect the country. However, this may be there. There is a fact that most of the important Shasta temples are located near the summits of mountains in the east, the one at Sabiribada being the foremost among them. Three traces of Kerala, Kerala Tandra, prescribed detailed rituals for the worship of this god. Yeah, similarly, Shankaradarayana conceived as Shiva and, ha, and ha, Shiva and half Vishnu is worshipped in many temples in this region. Another deity peculiarly known in Kerala is Kirada Murti in the form of Hunter God, born out of the union between Shiva and Parvati, when both assumed the forms of Andes. Goddess Dirijit worshipped in several tribes is only another aspect of Chamundi as the destroyer of the Raman Riju. Over and above these deities, the lords of the quarters, Ashwins, the seven sages, Apsaras, Nagas, Navagrahas, and other minor uh, divinities are also worshipped in various centers with rituals befitting them. The Brahmin speech, who is enjoined with traditional rites for installation of idols, conducted Conducted special rituals, festivals, and events. Rites is called the Tandrit. The most famous Tandrit of the land is the member of Taranandalur family who has these rites in almost all temples of Kerala. Sage Parasirama is supposed to have given the authority to family of Taranandalur, the members of which enjoy these rites down the centuries till date. 
the Kerala Bahatya has dealt with the several uh, these aspects. According to a Brahmin was brought from Kanchi Viram. Since the river of Kaveti is at Spate, Spate, Brahmin resorted to his superwoman powers to cross the river, and hence he got the name Tarada, meaning one who has crossed the river. The story goes that Parishirava called the Brahmin from the other side of the river and asked him to cross over the river, which was flooded. The Brahmin, a devotee of Krishna, meditated upon the Lord of fire, of fire and threw some six over the flood to form a bridge and easily crossed over to the astonishment of the sage. Before the sage had already brought six Brahmins from Kumbhavana, asserting their proficiency in Mantra Shastra. Almost every major temple in Kerala has a high priest called Tandri, who enjoys the hereditary authority on matters of ritual in the temples. There are several families having these rites as Tarnadalur. Is, uh, uh, Tarnadalur is the most, most important among them. Since a family of Tandrits enjoys right over several temples, it is difficult to uh, uh, reach key temples. And hence, a Tandran de tan delegates his powers to other trained Brahmins who are to perform the functions in yeah, as the chief priests. The delegates are called the dumpies, whose rights is to, fix, is to, is to fix for, fix it for a specific period. While the Bambi says how many of hundreds attend the rituals on special occasions, festivals and festivals, the Dambis perform daily routines. Even though other, other assistants that are provided for Dambi should perform the rituals called Puja. It may be noted that the, Tarana, the Tamil Nadu region a set of uh, eligible persons are enjoyed to perform rituals in temples. Several priests are present in the temple at the same time, and they are, and, are, and any of them are free to worship puja as required by this. Sometimes, even the devotees is permitted to offer puja to his life. Further, there are priests called, further, the priests attach the mandras loud so that all could hear it. But, if, but the Kerala priest, just mutter the mandras inaudibly and show various gestures with meticulous care following the prescription of the manuals. In other words, while puja is just cursory in other regions, Kerala, in Kerala, only a trained priest can perform it. Further, he alone could touch the idol in the sanctum sanctorum. On the other hand, if anybody else touches the idol, it calls for various expiatory ceremonies, as if it is polluted. There are two kinds of idols in major temples of Kerala. Ajala, that which cannot be moved, and Chala, that which could be taken out. The first is fixed on the on a pedestal permanently, and it is usually made in granite, or sometimes made of special kind of water called Kadisharkara Yoga, over which water could not be poured. The movable idols are made of metals, the only used uh, for the occasions of Sribeli, the old which Abhishega is performed, and sandal paste applied, the, the, uh, and the one taken out for processions in the, the shrines are movable uh, idols. The Azala uh, idols are made standing on the pedestal, sitting or a creda, or as reposing in a bed. In certain temples, Tandrika diagrams of Sri Chakra are also conceived, the deities of worship. Sometimes weapons like Shula, Khadga, and other are placed along with it, idols for, 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 for puja. The rituals of ceremonial worship is a combination of both Vaidya and Vedic mantras and methods, and Tantrika and Vedic mantras and rules. The Tantrika element highly predominating over the Vaidya. It therefore comes under the category of Tantrika Vaidika, following the classification of Purushartha Prabodha of Brahmananda Bharati. It is which constitute a integral part of Orthodox Shakta Shatra. However, no place is given in the Devi temples of Kerala. Madhya, Mamsa, 
Hypoxia and Mysina, whatever may be their dissertation and significance, as such entirely absent in routine temples. Uh, and Mundira alone is there. But it is in the sense of gesture, and it is there and quite a lot of them. Rituals in Kerala temples can be classified under four categories. They are daily rituals, monthly rituals, annual rituals, festivals which take place only once or twice a year. The routine temples that take place every day comes under the first duty division, but the modes of worship differ according to the size and popularity of the temples, which are classified as minor or major. The rituals performed in certain temples dates, like Tuesday, Friday, and other astrophysics, Kartika, and Shravadam. And this is like Chaturthi and Shashti and Pavarami on a monthly basis for the secondary category. The annual rituals are those performed annually. Tandrika Vars of Kerala have provided instructions for the above mentioned modes of rituals for the benefit of the temple priests and authorities. In most of the temples of Kerala, a routine can be noticed even now, and it is based on Tantrika manuals. The following account will give a glimpse of this ritualistic routine. The number of pujas per day, as well as the type of their performance, are also bound by rules. Generally, there will be three pujas every day. The Abhishek ceremony of bath is performed on the idol every day. Early in the morning, following by it, followed by Alangara decoration. The first puja is called Usha Puja and is conducted. At about noon, we get the second puja called Madhyana Puja or Usha Puja. The temple is closed after it is reopened in the evening. And third puja is done in every part of the day. This is called Ardhayama Puja, after which the temple remains closed till the next morning. All these pujas have some experience. Details about the most offering of beliefs and connected devatas and the major principles are followed by professional Uttara Murti and the like. In this connection, it may be noted that there are three distinct Tantrika systems prevalent in Kerala. They are Kashmirian system, Kashmirian system the Bengal system, and Kerala system. The first two systems are predominantly non-Vedic and are called Vama Marga. They follow the Shaivas cults, Shaivas Shakta cults, cults. Use of liquor meets as oblation for the deity, killing of animals, and even human beings as part of the worship ritualistic is made uh, in a, a worship of a, as also a worship of a Jewish, a new made also forms features of the system. Naturally, these systems have drawn uh, their, their own followers and uh, those distractors who consider them acts of, of as, as obnoxious. On the other hand, the Dekshana Marga prevalent in Kerala is Satvik in nature and uh, avoids the overings of liquor, etc. in temples. The Vaidhya in the object. Tantrika and homes of homas are performed as well. Bhagavati Seva or worship of Durga and the asatic aspects of Dalida is commonly conducted in Kerala houses as a domestic rituals. This is felicitated, felicitated by dry, drawing a diagram in the floor using powder, turmeric, etc. And the worship is done in, on a bell metal lamp placed in the center of the ritualistic diagram. Another popular method of sacrificial worship is Ganavati Homa, which is clever Ganavati in order to remove impediments. This is conducted in temples and in houses of devotees. But it does not mean that Vama Marga was entirely un unknown to Kerala. The legendary, legendary accounts maintain that some of the wonderful systems, followers of the system in Kerala, ha had their authorities. The Nambudri Baban saved himself from great embellishment by showing the full moon to a king of the locality on, on the night of a, a, a night of a full moon day. He said the goddess worshipped by him came to his rescue 
by showing the illusion. In some minor temples, liquor and meat were offered to as ablutions and distributed. But this is not popular. The modes of rituals prescribed above can be noticed in both in major temples of Kerala, especially those located in Trivandrum, Sijindram, Varkala, Changanu, Arunula, Tiruvalla, Haripad, Mavilikara, Kandiu, Amalapura, Payeno, Kaliparamba, Tripunatra, Trichambaram, and Kumara Delu, Ketu Angu and Vaisham. Some of these temples have certain special rituals on them. Most of the Randrakil, Randrakil work of Kerala incidentally deal with the construction of shrines. There are manuals like Shilparat of Sri Uvara, which, which specially concerns the sexual aspects of Kerala. This is because the activities of temple construction have relieved, has received a major part in Malabar style of temples. Uh, the Udian style pertaining to East Rivers. It also consists of Jaina temples of Kerala, constructed, etc. The typical indigenous temple of Kerala can be clearly identified by as it comes from other parts of Kerala. The Jai Jai imposing which parts the temples in other parts of India are constructed by their ancestors in Kerala. The character of Kerala temples are in Garpura. And the temples square, Sadrasha, or rectangular, Sadrasha, is called the pyramidical, pyramidical shigara, crowned with a two vigas and other things. And, uh, and uh, extending the flagstaff to the Gobira is conceived, is covered, uh, uh, known as Anakuti, and the uh, elephants take their stand in online. On occasions of temple festivals, the Tandrika dictators have dealt with the renovation of temples that have better days. Purificatory rites are also prescribed. These temples are like this. Tandrika tradition of Kerala is great. The existence of large works relating to Tandra, Agama, said popularly among them, and Tandra Savuchi of Chenna. Uh, is the most famous event of and uh, the practices of Kerala temples are followed uh, as prescribed by the Tandra Sabhichaya of Chennas. The subject is so vast that I have stopped in there. And uh, I think uh, I, uh, I, I should stop here. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the whole subject will be <laughs> going out of my Range. Thank you very much for the facilities offered by the Kupasami Shastri Institute, uh, to which uh, I am beholden in several ways. I had uh, my friends in the Institute, and I have most of my works uh, uh, to the Institute. And the authorities of the Kupasami Shastri Institute are my guides, and they supply me whatever materials I request. I require for, for, for composing my work in our field. So I am beholden to the Samishasri Institute for the kind cooperation extended to me during these days. I order it a great privilege to have made this special lecture at their request. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, very much for your kind words. Uh, you not only had your friends, you are still having friends. Though we are younger to you, we are still your friends. Uh, in my way, I am doing it in my home. Oh, there in is some home. noise. Uh, how did I play? So that uh, uh, and the, uh, the facilities of my daughter. She is my granddaughter. He's studying engineering. Oh. And he, he has a brother also. My son is living quite nearby. Okay. And I'm happy to have uh, their company. Uh, whatever I, I need, they are helping all the managers. My son is a doctor, an MBBS doctor, and he's the 
a chief physician in the general hospital in Toronto, just oh. two months away. And his wife also is a, an employee in the electricity board. board. So we are in the separate houses, but they are all close together. And uh, I'm happy to have the God who provided me a quiet and uh, contented life in, in the evening of my life. <laughs> and I'm also keeping uh, good health considered to my age, uh, which is 86. So I'm rewarded to Lord uh, Sri Krishna, who is the presiding deity in my nearby temples. My temple, my house is located on the banks of a tank. And on the bank of the tank, the, the temple is there. And I go there every day for daily worship and all that. So thank yeah. you very much for the kind uh, cooperation. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir, I just want to one, uh, one information from you, sir. Can I ask? Uh, what about the text called Kerala Tantra? Is there any text called Kerala Tantra? Uh, not Kerala Tantra, but I have the of Narayana in three volumes. Okay. Tantra Samuchya. That is why this was a hard thing. Obviously, the subject of Kerala Tantra. I hope the copies will be there. In, uh, yes, yes. Tantra Samuchya Narayana in three volumes. Uh, because the <coughs> yoga manuscript talks about quotes from Kerala Tantra and uh -huh. the new catalog as Catalogaram just mentions the name Kerala Tantra does not give any manuscript reference. Uh, yes, so, sir, because uh, uh, they, they, they only just mentioned the titles and uh, our manuscripts are in very poor condition. <laughs> and uh, whatever it works for publishing, how already we publish. And moreover, Anybody could not uh, deal with the subjects. He needs some specialist knowledge or about the terms of Tantra and other things. <laughs> Just transmit is not enough. We have to have the uh, specialization in agriculture, uh, architecture, and other uh, ritualistic details like Sri Chakra and other things are there. So, just an ordinary Sanskrit could not be able to do it. And moreover, people <coughs> were capable of. Uh, uh, doing this are uh, very rare. But of course, there are priests, but they know only about the ritualistic aspects. Right. And they don't know Sanskrit at all. They just have managed with, with a picture of Tantra in Malayalam and Sanskrit. But they are uh, good people are there. But scholars in Tantra are rare. It's, uh, it's fading out. So, also, we are just that uh, many specialities of Kerala has gone out of the war. The, 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 nobody, nowadays, nobody can build a, a Kutambalam, a temple uh, 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 theater. It's very difficult because the architectural details are so much. And also even uh, a traditional temple also is very much difficult to make. <coughs> and now to make an old temple is very costly because the copper sheet is applied over the roof. Oh. Uh, yeah, so, so that uh, the, the temple remains safe all this. Kerala is full of rains and all. <laughs> rainy, rainy place. Yeah. And hence the temples are well protected. Use the copper sheet. Mm -hmm. And, and the, okay. well, the modern yeah. temple also is very difficult. Oh, yeah. uh, copper sheet is needed. Uh, copper is very costly. Copper no, is is needed. <laughs> no, no, nobody can build a temple with uh, of a like Viruvayar and etc. Yeah. And temples like Tiruvalla are big with big domes and all that. Mm. Also in Trichur. Very, very, which is very costly. And the building is, and moreover, we don't have architects. And the conical roof is very different. Mm. From a single point, you have to spread over the whole area. And the, the, the rafters have to be joined. Hmm. What is called Wallabi, with Wallabi and all that. So it will be very tight. And if you cut one Wallabi, the whole thing comes, comes down. Yes. Uh, yes, that's a problem. Hmm. And the architects are, and the usually the old, the old artisans who build, build a te temple are considered as Brahmins and they are given the Purnudul. Uh, 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 Such people are very rare now. 
Hmm. I remember we called this modern techniques. Education. Old, old penetration site is no more available. Hmm. But uh, most of the Kerala old temple, old houses, uh, like what is called Balikatta, etc., are well protected. And moreover, even though rooms are smaller, it is just like air conditioning. Oh. In a heavy rain area, you would lie inside, inside a room. You don't feel like raining outside. Okay. Uh, so that, that is the way of construction. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I am happy to be there, and uh, I I have my uh, I, my dreams to come over mm. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's only what can I say. Okay. So moving about the uh, very difficult nowadays. Mm. Thank you, sir, for a fine oh, lecture. Uh, yeah, Indeed, we have been very fortunate to have this lecture from you. Ah. We enjoyed it thoroughly. Yes. You know, all the, I think all the, all the research scholars who listened to it would have noted how yes. a paper should be presented, how yes. a detailed research should be done. Step by step, you showed us the way. And if I did, we did it done. And if any student uh, requires my, uh, you just give them the address Definitely, and I get sir. Answer. Definitely, I mean, definitely. I will, provide, I will provide materials. Definitely, definitely, sir. So we'll do our, that. Uh, it is our business to do that. Yes. As a teacher. Yes. As a teacher, you are teacher until your last breath. Exactly, so, exactly. You are right. You are I'm right, doing. sir. Uh, we will. We are. We are also still learning. We will come to you. <laughs> come to you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You, you have been a good friend of uh, the institute from Dr. Janaki's time. Yes, Raja, sir. everybody. Yes. Yes, sir. So we have yeah, seen you from that on time onwards. And, uh, my, my wife was saying that uh, about Janaki, who had mm. stayed with me in my house. I know. Oh, oh to, when she <laughs> came to Tuandram. Yeah, yeah, Tuandram. And she I came think to you Tuandram. all went to Torino. Ah. Together. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. She was, she was a great friend. She yes. was great. Yes. yes. And thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a nice lecture ah. and for accepting the honor that I've been bestowed on you by us. We have been greatly honored by your, your reception of it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Professor Shankaran Kutinayar. A special thanks for you for having done the duty for our, on our behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Namaste. You. And we are thankful to the endowment makers. Yes. <coughs> endowment yes. maker, Sri Ati Chari, who yeah. made it possible for us to honor great scholars like you every year. We are deeply beholden to him for this. Thank you very much, sir. Have a nice evening. And Thank you. Murali Mahathavad is a scholar, right? Who worked with Yes. I know, I know. You know him very well. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. After some time, he is not at work. He is quite young. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank you.